So they say life is like a box of chocolates. Well, we got a box for you today. It's the ultimate buyer's guide for the Lexus LS400, AKA the grandpa car. <laughs> So, this is Steve's 97 Lexus LS 400 on airlift suspension, and we got a pretty dandy wheel and tire set up, so let's get into that. We have some Artisa Titans, our very own in-house wheel brand that we created, so it's super cool to see them on this LS 400. Steve went with a tucked setup so he could put this big body on the ground. That's the triple B of the Lexus LS 400s, by the way. Anyways, these are some 18 by nine and a half plus 35s with some 265, 35, 18 Federal 595s. Pretty affordable tire. And then you got the good old Artisa Titans, which are directional. The silver on the white looks really good. The one nice thing about LS 400s is they are five by 114.3, AKA you can get pretty much any wheel you want. Steve's running these. I know down the road, he's looking at some multi-piece wheels, which is really common for these cars. You're gonna see them on work, on SSR. A lot of different Japanese wheel brands go on these cars because it's a Japanese car and they just look good and timeless. So if you didn't realize we're at the retirement community because we felt like that was most fitting for this car, but uh, let's take a look under the hood of what's pushing this big bitch. So, oh man, Steve, how do I open this? Oh, right here. Nice and easy. There we go, the 1UZ, baby, the V8 that powers this. So although it kind of has the looks of a grandpa car, it is powered by a big gnarly V8, which is nice because these are known for their reliability. However, you're not gonna see a lot of engine performance for these cars. You're not gonna see a lot of aftermarket options. You'll have the few crazy guys that are dumping money into them to supercharge them and all that good stuff. But overall, more of the cosmetic stuff on these cars. You're not gonna see a lot of the performance stuff, just not what the market's for. So Steve's here is just stock. You can see the airlift struts here with the adjustable damping on top, uh, which is really nice. But overall, we just got a lot of plastics in the engine bay. All right, so like we talked about, Steve is on airlift three-piece suspension. So let's take a look at the trunk setup. There better not be any wood floors in here, I swear. Nice. So this is probably one of the biggest trunks that we've reviewed on the Ultimate Buyer's Guide. Uh, yeah, definitely can fit a lot of bodies in there. That's for sure. If you're gonna do air ride, plenty of room to do a trunk setup. I like it, nice clean install for now. Got the polished tank, looks good. Also though, not only is the trunk is big, but the antenna is big. Doesn't look like it, but you wait. See, that's huge. Psych. Psych! It just keeps going. That's psycho. You get CB radio on this motherfucker. Big trucker 10-4. Uh, let's take her for a rip. Alrighty. Ugh. Actually, not. This is the most comfortable car I've driven. It's like Transformers get that Lexus luxury. I'm excited to drive this one. Like I said, it's big, but it is comfortable. Not only that, we're gonna dabble right on this air suspension here. Put a little few extra PSI, cause me and Sean are some big boys. So here we go. We'll talk about a little bit of the mods you can do, some of the pros and cons. I'm gonna tell you a pro right now. It's comfortable as hell and I can't get over that. Obviously this isn't like a super performance oriented car. So like you're steering, kind of feels like you're driving a yacht because you kind of are, you know? We'll wave to all of our friends in the retirement community. They enjoyed it. They stopped and talked to us for a while. Is that an IS 300? Dang. There's so many old people. <laughs> we get out of here. Or we could do a big old burnout. If you're looking to modify one of these cars, suspension, wheels, tires, 
obviously a big thing to do right away. BC racing coilovers are super popular. A lot of the guys love running these static and running them crazy low, as low as they can go, and then a little bit more low. Otherwise, if you wanna save your underbody, airlift is a super popular choice, and that's what Steve has on here. Uh, he installed it himself, went pretty good. One thing about the install though with the airlift was the main wiring harness actually runs right above your front tires. Uh, so Steve had to take the fenders off and reroute that to run higher up because if you're uh, bottoming out or anything like that when you're lowered, you don't want your tires rubbing through. Uh, like we talked about earlier too, engine performance, not a lot of mods out there for that and you're probably not gonna be doing that if you pick one of these up. The pro though of the engine is these are known for their reliability. The transmissions are tanks and the engine's a tank and as long as you do your general maintenance on it, you're gonna have a good time. Another thing I love about these cars is it's just a timeless design. I feel like as they get older, they get better looking. Like they're aging like fine wine. Not only that, but I mean, it's a Lexus. So everything's super nice in it and feels really quality. And these cars had a MSRP that was over $50,000. And now you can get them for like five, six, seven K all day long. Um, and this car has treated Steve really well. He's driven it across the country. I mean, he picked this up in Vegas and drove it back to Wisconsin, got it here, begged it, then drove it to Florida and drove it back. No questions, wasn't worried about it. Uh, really phenomenal cars. It just depends what you wanna do with it. This is more of the low and slow gang. Like it does have the V8, but by no means are you gonna be beating people in every race. The one thing to think about if you're gonna pick one of these up is the 90 to 94s don't have an interference engine. You're still gonna wanna replace your water pump and timing belt, but if it goes early uh, and you didn't replace it, it's not gonna lock up your engine. However, the 95 up cars are interference engines. So if your timing belt snaps, there goes your engine. So if you're picking one of these up and you're in those rear ranges, I mean, regardless if it's interference or not, I would check, make sure that the previous owner did a timing belt water pump um, because you're gonna have to do one of those. You just, just do it, don't avoid it. Do not put it off. That's how catastrophic failure happens. Now, some of the pros and cons from Steve, the owner of this car is, it gets complimented by everyone. It doesn't matter if they're 90 or they're 19. Uh, everyone in between likes this car. And like I was talking about, it's just one of those timeless designs. You lower it, you put it on wheels and they just look fantastic. He also said rear wheel drive V8, bitch. I can agree with that. So some of the cons he said are, it's a little bit slow for a V8. You know, it's a big car, so it is what it is. Uh, gas mileage, again, you're running a V8. It's not gonna be the best. It's not a really an economy car. Okay. Um, and then parts can be expensive for this. It's kind of a niche market. A lot of times you're either waiting on parts to be made because they're back ordered because you just have one guy producing parts for the community or just everyone's out of stock. So that's something to be mindful of. You're not gonna just mod this thing to holy hell. It's gonna take some time to put it together. Oh, and one other con, well, con, con, is the cup holders. Apparently they only fit like a soda can and that's about it. Lexus, what are you doing? You gotta be fitting champagne bottles and so don't drink and drive. No, this is cut. Man, this is a big old girl. Hopefully I park this not like a dingus. Kinda feels like I'm driving a semi. Jesus! I can't even see out the back window. Like this, made a little bit of this. You ready for this? Yeah, air it out now. Make sure the steering wheel's straight. Oh yeah, yeah, that's my favorite. The steering wheel moves up all nice and stuff free. It's so courteous. All right, guys. So what do you think? It's the Lexus LS 400. It's timeless. I love these things. They look so damn good. They're boxy. They got little knickknacks about them like the antenna and the steering wheel moves for yourself. But there is some modifications that are tough to do. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Would you own one? Would you not own one? And don't forget wheels, tires, and suspension, especially the stuff mentioned in this episode down in the description available at fitmentindustries.com. 
I don't know what we should review next. Drop a comment about that too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read all of them. I'm reading all the comments. 